So good morning or good afternoon for this uh, virtual talk. Uh, my name is uh, Bernard Barani. I work for the European Commission and I'm deputy head of unit of the uh, division called Future Connectivity Systems uh, in DigiConnect. And this is the division where we have uh, basically uh, two main uh, roles or two main competencies is about uh, research and innovation. That means uh, it's our responsibility to put in place a strategy and implementation for uh, research and innovation in the field of uh, networks, telecoms, and uh, related IT systems. And the second of uh, our activities is about uh, helping Europe to put in place the framework conditions for network deployments. That means these days uh, 5G deployment. That means uh, uh, helping member states to have a coordinated approach towards uh, 5G uh, deployment. So uh, at this moment in time, uh, as I said that we have a research and innovation role, we are in the process of uh, defining our uh, future programs uh, of research in telecom. And of course, 6G comes uh, as, uh, let's say, the elephant in the room. And that's uh, really our priority now to check uh, what we are going to do in the next phase, the next years in this particular topic. But before we do that, uh, a few words uh, to tell you exactly the framework under which we operate at this uh, moment in time. Uh, as you probably know, uh, the new commission led by President von der Leyen uh, has published uh, its political agenda uh, beginning of this year. And you can see, uh, this is on the top uh, right hand side of this slide, uh, that uh, under this political agenda there are six priorities one of them being uh, related to digital. So digital features prominently in this political uh, agenda. From several perspectives, digital as a technology being used and serving uh, digitization of the industry and the society, but also uh, European actors and European supply side being uh, much more able than today, possibly, uh, to supply uh, the right technologies to the market, which is sometimes dominated by non-European uh, uh, players. So in that context, the notion of open uh, strategic autonomy uh, has come uh, at the forefront, and this is something we are discussing now with the member states, how we can move forward uh, with Europe towards uh, more prominence uh, on the supply side of digital technologies. In this political agenda, there are also other issues that we believe are very, very uh, important, very relevant for uh, digital. That means the so-called Green Deal, which is our commitment to tackle uh, climate change. And this is a domain where we believe uh, digital technologies have a lot to offer and also uh, economic uh, impact and uh, better economy functioning for the citizen. This is again a domain where I believe digital is a lot to offer. So in that overall context, political context, uh, 6G has been identified as one of the prominent technologies that can contribute to this uh, political agenda. Our commissioner uh, Thierry Breton has made a couple of public intervention where he said that we have to move now or to uh, make it such that Europe gets prepared uh, for the next wave of uh, network innovation and uh, uh, 6G. Uh, and in that context, uh, we published uh, beginning of January this year, 29th of January to be precise, a communication on a cyber security toolbox uh, in which we announced uh, specifically, explicitly, our intention to set up a partnership uh, with the industry, with the private side, uh, so industry and research actors, to uh, develop a European approach towards uh, 6G. So, of course, this roadmap has to take into account what we see developing uh, all over the place uh, and globally. We have seen a lot of announcement on 6G lately in the next couple of months. Uh, I think the most recent one uh, being the one of Korea in September uh, that announced under the Ministry MSIT uh, the launch of a Korean 6G initiative with uh, some amounts of about 200 million euros, I think, uh, they mentioned. Uh, Japan also published a roadmap in uh, June this year. China already started next year setting up a working group on uh, 6G. In Europe, uh, very interesting, one initiative uh, was already started last year in Finland. It's the so-called 6G flagship led by University of Aulu, which is uh, funded, uh, I think, by the Finnish uh, 
actors up to a level of uh, 250 million euros for six years. So it's already uh, an important initiative, which we expect will, of course, be a, a great contributor to the European roadmap for uh, 6G. So in that context, uh, what did we do? We started already to think about what might come uh, after 5G or what might come as complement to 5G and already two years ago. We started to think a little bit of uh, um, what we have to uh, focus on. And uh, one thing that came prominently, and I think this is the kind of things you find more or less in all the global roadmaps, is to the intention to concentrate more uh, on uh, non-functional properties such as uh, security, uh, uh, energy consumption uh, or societal issues, which are not things which are directly uh, visible from the, from the point of view of the application that serves the users, but, are, but which are very important to uh, make the technology sustainable. One element being, for instance, uh, EMF and uh, uh, electromagnetic radiation. We see that today 5G is, is uh, deploying, is being deployed in Europe. We have about, I think, today 30 networks in uh, 15 member states, uh, which are active networks uh, today. But we see something we did not expect at all, which is a, a lot of resistance to 5G deployment, uh, with a lot of activists uh, propagating all sorts of news, uh, fake news, uh, uh, on uh, the performance uh, of the impact of 5G on uh, health, human health, or uh, animal health, or, what, uh, or whatever. So. These are important aspects to take into account uh, for the future, but also the aspects which are related to, uh, as I said, sustainability, energy consumption. Energy consumption is related to climate change, but it's a political uh, a priority, but it's also important from an economic perspective because the energy bill of the operators is uh, quite uh, high, so uh, that there is uh, the intention to minimize this type of uh, costs. And uh, also other aspects such as coverage. Uh, we today uh, have uh, 3.5 billion people all over the planet which do not have any internet connection or internet access. Uh, as, as, uh, issues such as um, trust, uh, data control by users, security are also coming very strongly as uh, important drivers for future research uh, on 6G and uh, net, uh, on future networks. Not that it's not there in 5G, there is already a, a dimension of 5G that addresses all these concerns, but uh, we would like to see if we can push that uh, a little bit further. So from that perspective, we start to develop now uh, from the functional property side, uh, um, a vision with the stakeholders and with uh, industry where we uh, see basically two aspects. Uh, one aspect is the continuation of uh, what has been started with 5G, that means the coming together of the digital world uh, with the physical world, which is already uh, well ahead with uh, IoT deployment or massive uh, machine communication type characteristics that you find in, uh, in 5G. But this is something that will be pushed uh, beyond the limits that we can see today with uh, 5G. And the other element that we see coming, which is potentially new compared to the 5G reflection when uh, ITU published its uh, vision in, uh, I think it was in 2013, something like that. Uh, that's the coming together of the digital world uh, with the human world, uh, be, be it from the perspective of the biological characteristics of, uh, from your skin, from your body, or from the perspective of the behavior of the uh, persons and how uh, the networks can be uh, used to collect this in information and to transmit this information uh, towards uh, the benefits of uh, applications and towards the benefits of users, of course. So from that perspective, we have identified at this moment in time six dimensions of uh, 6G. These are not the only ones, but let's say these are the core ones. So from the application side that you see uh, at the top of this chart, on the right hand side, you can see um, a number of uh, developments that we expect that will push the envelope of the performance indicators that we have now in 5G. That means uh, moving beyond the 5.9 uh, reliability objective of 5G. We hear from some industrial environments that they would like to have uh, seven nines uh, reliability figures instead of five nines. Maybe we need to move be uh, below the one millisecond latency that. Uh, 5G was, uh, has been promoting, uh, again, in very specific harsh industrial environments. Uh, 
gigabit per second towards a terabit per second. There are also some applications that probably will go in that direction. So this is really stretch, stretching the envelope of the uh, performance indicators of uh, 5G. On the left hand side on the application, we see another dimension, which is more new type of applications, such as what I mentioned before, the Internet of Sense, the coming together of sensing and communication, which is a promise of terahertz communication. I, I think all the people working on 6G today work on terahertz communication at the same time, uh, but also other type of applications, such as holographic communication that require potentially uh, massive data rates and which has potentially an impact on the network architectures and how the, 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 the data streams are served from a local perspective. Uh, at the bottom of this diagram, you can see what I mentioned before as the societal focus. On the uh, left hand side, the aspects which are related to energy consumption, energy consumption both from the network platform perspective, so trying to bring uh, the network consumption as low as possible. And here we believe that the new reflection has to be started because the more we go towards densification, the more we go towards processing at the edge, uh, the more we have a kind of trade-off to achieve between the consumption that comes from the processing and the consumption that comes from the transmission. Today, most, most of the consumption comes from transmission, but in the future probably will not be the case. So there will be some trade-offs here. Uh, and also energy consumption from the point of view of how to serve the vertical users to optimize their process uh, through uh, these network platforms and optimizing their process in the context of also uh, optimizing their uh, carbon footprint. So that's one thing. The second societal element is what we mentioned as accessibility of the technology or affordability of the technology, which probably which will be pushed forward by uh, new approaches like uh, open RAN and uh, massive softwareization and disaggregation of networks, which potentially will bring the cost of the technology uh, much lower and which again opens some prospects for a more massive deployment of this new generation of networks. And in the middle, of course, all the aspects which are related to network management, the so-called uh, FCAPS uh, characteristics in the telecom jargon, uh, trying to move towards fully automated networks. Here, uh, artificial intelligence plays a major role, but also other technologies from the security side, be it uh, blockchain or quantum, are technologies that are potentially called upon uh, to being integrated into these new platforms to serve a more uh, strict type of uh, requirements. So from that perspective, uh, uh, we have uh, developed what we call um, a smart network and service uh, partnership approach. And this partnership approach is based on what we call a value chain. So far, when we started the 5G public-private partnership uh, in 2013 with the European actors uh, to uh, support, again, uh, European research in 5G, uh, we were coming primarily from the telecom world and uh, our objective was really the network platform because this is one of the strong assets of uh, Europe in digital. Now our approach is to try to be a little bit more holistic. That means to leverage European assets in telecoms to try to also address uh, devices from the IoT perspective if we assume that there will be uh, billions or zillions, I don't know what are the projections, but a huge, huge amount of connected devices uh, that will open opportunities for new classes of uh, devices beyond smartphones. And also from the perspective of Edge Cloud, uh, serving, uh, having service platforms uh, at the edge uh, is something that we want to integrate into this overall roadmap and reflection to develop a complete value chain with a presence of uh, European actors, including, and this is maybe new compared to the approach we took before, uh, at the level of uh, enabling technologies and components, for instance, if we have to go into terahertz frequencies, I believe we have to start from the onset to start with the microelectronics industry to identify uh, what kind of roadmap they can put forward to have a, a European uh, approach towards this type of components, including at processor level, which is here maybe a, a more difficult reflection because uh, Europe has no real capability in processors at this moment in time. So these are developing topics, uh, but we intend to look into those a, a bit more systematically. So from that perspective, where are we now? We are coming to the end of the current program, which is called the Horizon 2020. So the legal base of Horizon 2020 uh, terminates this year. 
And under this uh, horizon 2020, we have implemented the 5G public-private partnership that I mentioned from 2013 to 2020. So this is coming to an end, which is normal as uh, 5G is not anymore really in the research domain. But we have, we are now launching nine projects that will be active the beginning of next year, uh, precisely to work uh, on 6G roadmap and on 6G delegated technology. So we have one so-called uh, flagship project, uh, which is uh, led by, uh, let's say, the classical uh, actors of the uh, European telecom ecosystems, both from the vendor side and from the uh, operator side. And then we have a number of uh, eight satellite projects which are dealing with specific technological aspects. These uh, two years projects will be uh, active as a kind of bridging phase into the partnership, the smart network and service partnership that we intend to launch uh, mid uh, uh, between mid and end of next year, uh, for which we propose a budget envelope in the order of 1 billion uh, euro for seven years. So uh, at the bottom of this slide, what you can see is the uh, so-called uh, um, uh, industry proposal for the smart network and uh, service partnership that we uh, received a couple of months ago. So you can find and download this roadmap uh, at the URL that you can see on uh, uh, this slide. This is the kind of uh, work program that uh, industrial actors uh, are proposing to us to, to back. Uh, for the implementation of uh, 6G initiative uh, uh, in Europe. And uh, as you can see, this initiative is supported by uh, five uh, industry associations, 5G IA, which is the 5G Infrastructure Association, which was our main partner, which was our partner for the 5G public-private partnership implementation that we started again, as I said before. Uh, but now they are being complemented with other associations which are representing more the cloud and uh, IoT domains uh, because, as I said, uh, in the context of this value chain, we want to have also these uh, aspects more prominently addressed in the 6G initiative. And this initiative will have uh, two legs. One leg which is on the deployment, the primarily uh, this is a short-term type of activity which is promoting deployment of uh, 5G uh, for delegated applications, uh, for example, the automotive sector or in the factory sector. So that's, uh, the, let's say, the deployment side. And on the research side, on the right hand side, the green box, uh, we will work uh, on the technologies uh, to achieve the 6G vision uh, that we are in the process of uh, putting forward. So at this moment uh, in time, this is our um, let's say, uh, roadmap, and uh, again, we intend to launch this partnership uh, next year. Uh, if you are more interested, there will be also uh, an event with, with Etsy, 24th and 25th of November, that you can reach at the URL, which is indicated on this slide. Uh, at this event, we will uh, explain a little bit more the various aspects of what we intend uh, to support. And uh, also, uh, there will be uh, an element of reflection at this event on how can we promote uh, the uh, spin-off of uh, research results uh, into standardization uh, domain. So that will be the main uh, aspect of this uh, workshop. So uh, with this, uh, I want to conclude my uh, presentation by thanking you very much. And again, uh, you have my email address on the first slide of this presentation. So in case you would have any clarification question, don't uh, hesitate to contact me and I will do all my best to try to answer it. Thank you very much for your attention.